So the idea to uh, bring agent-based agent, agent modeling uh, to the classroom comes from a discussion we had last year at the CAA in Atlanta. Um, and the choice of uh, using sampling as a, as a matter, as a subject, comes from a, a very important existential traumatic question uh, I notice uh, among my students. Um, that is, when you plan your, your, your excavation, where, where exactly do you start? Where do you put your zero, zero? Uh, and where do you start your grid? Uh, because in their ID, uh, if you start in one place and the site is well, right next to it, you will never find it. So it's really a traumatic question they had. And I wanted to, to show, uh, try to illustrate for them that it's not really a, a, a main matter for us. Um, so uh, we have two solutions to, to, to explain them uh, uh, how sampling works. We can use books and explain them uh, the main, the main uh, strategies we have would be systematic or, or, or random, or we can bring them to, to the field and uh, propose them to do it themselves and see how it works uh, um, uh, practically. Uh, a third solution would be to use uh, agent-based modeling so that uh, we don't have to go on the field, which might be expensive and time-consuming, and uh, also that we don't have to, to learn through books uh, uh, something that is uh, um, really practical. Um, so uh, uh, the solution offered by, by, by agent-based modeling is really to, to show them uh, visually how sampling or how our strategies are, uh, are impacting uh, giving re results. Um, so the, the, I will show you the, the, the model and here we have different parts of the code. Uh, so you might see that uh, um, I've been using uh, two different breeds um, the sides and the, and the quads, and also the, the patches. Every patch on, on, the, on the, the wall has its own, its own uh, characteristics. Um, when we set up, it just cleans everything, so it will be uh, faster. And um, we have a series <coughs> of, of buttons to make a, a step by step um, um, example. The first one allows us to, to populate the world with. Each, uh, each click makes one, one new site, um, and it gives a, a certain amount of artifacts for each site. And then we might click on scatter to really make uh, uh, the artifacts scattering around the site, so that's not just one patch that has all the, the, the artifact, but it's a, a, an area. And then they have to choose uh, one method. Here uh, they can choose between random and systematic um, and they have to, to um, also uh, define a scattering uh, option that will uh, uh, set up the number of, 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 uh, of areas to be, to be dug. Um, and finally, when they, oh, that is the other, the other method, systematic. And finally, when they click on dig, uh, well, the, the, the number of, of artifacts present in, in the patch will just be uh, co copied to the to the to the quad. When you click dig, you have the results here: the sum of uh, uh, the total of artifacts that are in the world, the sum of artifacts that are uh, actually uh, excavated, and the proportion. So um, it's a really simple uh, simple code that allows us to 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 illustrate that. Anyway, we will have a very, very low uh, uh, amount of, of artifact, um, whether we, we, we use one method or the other. Um, but agent-based modeling also allows us to, 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 to integrate time into the, the, the model. So um, I put up a deadline um, option that allows us to extend uh, our excavation um, in a few clicks. So, um, we might use the large button also to run it a uh, hundred times. And here is where we find the, the when we, we can illustrate the, 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 the difference between those two um, 
methods. Um, as you can see, with a, a, a small deadline uh, of one, so one click of extension, the, the proportion of, of material excavated is really low. Uh, but if we put a, a higher deadline, the proportion is getting really uh, higher. So uh, that is what we can illustrate uh, and what, uh, where we find the difference between uh, systematic and random uh, sampling that um, when you have a very low deadline, it's not very different if we use one or the other, uh, the other uh, method. And when we have a long time, it's also not very different. The difference appears when we have, just in the middle, uh, um, um, there we can see that systematic uh, method is slightly more efficient than the random one. And we, have, we might choose different options also to, to see if, uh, what happens when the sites are less, more or less scattered. So, the code is not really long. It's about uh, uh, 50 lines. Uh, it has a few uh, problems. For example, uh, when we define the, the, the random uh, method, I had to define manually the number of, uh, of, of patches that would be excavated uh, in order to match the number that uh, is excavated when we use systematic method. Uh, so there's still uh, a few problems that could be, uh, the code could be, should be uh, a little shorter. Um, I also need to implement a semi-systematic uh, method when we uh, define various areas uh, with each area having a, a, um, a percentage of random, um, random uh, patches to excavate. So it's really a work and a progress, but it's uh, I've been presenting it to, to a few classrooms and um, it helps really students to visualize, to understand better how it works uh, when they have a demonstration uh, live in front of them. Uh, it's not necessary to go on the field uh, so that they might excavate themselves, but using agent-based -based modeling, we really have an option to bring a uh, um, reactive um, teaching method that allows them to, to, to really understand and view how it works. So that was the idea I, um, I need to uh, work on, on, on the code more. And if anyone is interested in helping, it would be, would be really a pleasure to, to, to hear your suggestions. Thank you. Thank you.